Chibogo. Hi, Rod. I've got this brand new coffee here that originated in Ethiopia in a little village called Gesha. But now it's grown at 1,900 meters above sea level in Panama, and it's hand-picked by the local farmers, and then sun-dried for 14 days, and then washed, and then lightly roasted. And I paid $390 per kilo for this coffee, and I've brewed it with 15.3 grams, at a ratio of 13.3 to 1 of the highest quality glacial water. It has flavors of passion fruit, raspberry lemonade, and an upfront red grape acidity. Gotta give it a try. Here, let me show you. That's it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. What do you think? Just tastes like coffee. I hate you. <laughs> G'day guys, right here, your coffee coach. Is that you who can't taste anything in your coffee except the flavor coffee, even though on the websites or on the coffee bags, there's hundreds of fantastic, amazing flavors, but all you can taste is coffee? Just tastes like coffee. I hate you. Well, don't worry. I'm going to explain exactly why coffee doesn't always match the descriptions. So, let's get into it. Why is it when you go online or into a cafe or into a nice roastery and you get this very expensive bag of specialty coffee and it says flavors like pink Persian fairy floss and chocolate ganache and raisin toast, but then you get it home in your latte and it just tastes like chocolate. Maybe it just tastes like coffee. I hate you. I'm probably gonna get destroyed by all the commercial roasters around the world here for pulling back the curtains on this Wizard of Oz operation of smoke and mirrors. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. But the reality is those flavors are made up. The wonderful marketers of the world just exaggerate these little flavors and they lie. They purely make them up. Why do they make them up? For the pure and simple reason they do this is marketing. If you're going online and you haven't tried the coffee before and you're buying it for the first time, you don't know what to distinguish between the two different coffees that you've come across. What sounds better? Freshly whipped cream on a New York baked cheesecake or vanilla? Pink Persian fairy floss or berries? See? there's not really that much other than the flavor types to distinguish it. And remember the power of suggestion. If someone says to you, oh, you're gonna taste red berries in this, your brain automatically goes searching for those flavors. So you're more likely to find those flavors in there. And even if you can't quite determine it, you'll convince yourself that they exist in there and that you really don't have the palate to be able to taste them. But in reality, there's only a hundred 10 categorized flavors that the Specialty Coffee Association have set up in a flavor wheel, which can be easily replicated using exact products to determine the flavors of the aromas and the flavors in your coffee that you can taste easily. And yes, there's probably a little bit of creative license going into it. Of course, you're never going to taste all of these flavors, but those products are not in your coffee unless the beans themselves have been soaked in Fruity Loops syrup, you're not going to taste Fruity Loops in your coffee. It's literally coffee that's reminiscent of someone's idea of what reminds them of Fruity Loops. So what is it that makes coffee taste like these other flavors that are really subtle? Well, in coffee, there's about 1500 complex chemical compounds and volatile aromatic compounds that make up coffee in whole. And that's about five times more than a wine has in it. So coffee is very complex. All the flavors are very, very subtle. The most distinguishable one is caffeol. And that chemical compound is the identifiable aroma that we know is coffee. And when you extract it into the liquid form, that is the flavor that we know as coffee. And that's why coffee tastes like coffee. The next most easily identifiable compound is called theobromine, which is that one that we find in cacao and gives us the flavor, yep, you guessed it, chocolate. So that's why coffee and chocolate really go well together as well. Now, Arabica coffee, which is a species of coffee, when it's grown at high altitudes, lets the sugars develop a lot more. So you get the sucrose and the fructose all of those delicate sugars in your cup, and they can often be distinguishable as brown sugar, 
malt, caramels, those sort of flavors. And then there's the acids. Now we're talking good acids here, not sulfuric acids. We're talking about acids like citric acid, which you find in lemon, obviously gives it lemony flavor. You've got your phosphorus acid, which is very common in blueberries and other berries, which gives it that really delicate berry flavor. And of course, there's many more acids and other chemical compounds in there. Some are undesirables. So a lot of chlorogenic acid tastes quite bitter. And that's why we know that coffee has that really bitter taste. But a lot of the modern coffee brewers now will try to reduce the amount of chlorogenic acids in your coffee cup so it tastes a lot more sweet. Now there's a lot more compounds in there and we don't 100% understand how they all interact, which one produces more flavors than others and how they interact with each other. We're all still learning. And by now you're probably saying, yes, I'm the one who can taste those flavors or I still taste coffee. Don't worry, because as your palate develops, there's a couple of things that you can look into to get more flavors out of your coffee. One, what coffee bean you choose. So there's two main species of coffee. There's Arabica, which I talked about just before, and there's Canephora, or commonly known as Robusta. And Robusta is exactly that. It's a robust, intense flavor. It has twice the amount of caffeine in coffee, and it doesn't have those nuanced characteristics that Arabica, the sweeter species, has. And so if you're buying online and you don't know which one you're buying, it doesn't say it. If you're buying instant coffee, more likely that's Robusta. If you're buying coffee out of Brazil, more likely that's Arabica. If you're buying coffee from Vietnam, more likely that's Robusta as well. So it really is harder to determine when you're buying online which variety you're buying, but specialty coffee is generally always Arabica. So you're at home now drinking your latte, wondering why you can still only taste chocolate when the bag you've got says you should be able to taste red berries as well. And I'll explain why. You see, flavor descriptions are generally written for coffees without milk. And why is that when 80 to 90% of people still drink coffee with milk? Well, that's because milk itself has a whole bunch of other compounds in it as well. And they vary in flavor. Even in full cream itself, there's multiple different flavors, let alone when you get the half and half, the skis, the lactose free, the alternative dairy type drinks of soy, oat, almond. Those all have different flavors and they interact with coffee very differently. So you can't write a thousand different flavor descriptions for every different type of brewing method and coffee and then type of milk that you use. So we just look to write it for the one single type, which is when you're drinking the coffee black. So you've got to understand that these coffee flavor notes were never really meant for consumers or home baristas at all. In fact, they were actually meant for roasters from the farmers to help the roasters identify what flavors they need to pull out of their bean in order to make it fit in with their blend or to just highlight certain characteristics of a single origin. Go back 10 years plus and no one was even asking about flavors of coffee. We all just expected coffee to either taste good or kind of bad. In fact, the biggest flavor that used to be out there was just plain chocolate. And that's why when I started on Il Caramello, I wanted something completely different to what was out there. So I wanted to find those caramels, those malts, and a little bit of apricot, and I've just developed that over the years and refined it to keep improving the flavors. And this is probably a good time to talk to you about coffee beans delivered because Il Caramello is one of the best-selling coffee blends on Coffee Beans Delivered, and you can buy that wherever you are in Australia or even in the world, and it will ship to you within days. So if you want to jump on the website, grab some of this amazing coffee and experience what I'm talking about, because you will be able to taste those caramels and those malts in your latte or cappuccino or however you drink it, and you can really experience that at your home, jump on the website coffeebeansdelivered.com.au and check out the whole range there. If you can't order coffee, you're not interested in order coffee, please just give us a like or subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and enjoy celebrating coffee with me. Every little bit helps get the word out there so that we can all enjoy this liquid gold. But now let's get back to talking about the coffee notes. So when we go to market and we go to the importers, they'll send in a range of different coffee samples, usually 80 to 100 grams, which we'll roast up and those help us identify what coffees we like, what coffees we want to buy in bulk. And sometimes we are creating a blend of different flavors and some coffees work together well, others don't. 
So we usually put them in a light roast and then put them all side by side in a cup. We grind it coarsely. We just add some hot water. We wait about 15 minutes till it's pretty much tepid and then we slurp it up with a spoon. Yeah, sounds great, doesn't it? A symphony of slurping just to taste all the different coffees. But that's where the flavor notes really help us. So how can this knowledge help you at home develop your palate? Well, start with the broader flavors. Don't try and find the mandarin acidity or pomegranate or flavors that you've never even heard of like dragon fruit, which you might've not even tried in your life. Start with the really broad flavors like chocolate and caramels, maybe some brown sugar, maybe some fruit. Of course, if you drink a long black, you can still highlight some of those characteristics like the berries and the fruitiness, but you're obviously not going to get as much nuanced flavor as something like a siphon or a filter, something that a light roast does. So you really have to look at what you're drinking and then start to look at what the flavor notes on the bags or in the websites, what they actually say and whether they're gonna really translate through to the drink that you have at home. Easiest way to start is to look at whether you're buying a blend. A blend is a lot more accurate than a single origin. When you create a blend, you can really hone in on each single origin coffee to highlight a certain characteristic like creaminess, or maybe you wanna have a long lingering sweetness to the finish. Maybe you wanna have a full bodied chocolate, deep chocolate and intense upfront flavors. So when you're creating blends, you can really tweak, almost like playing with the DNA to highlight certain flavors. If you're buying single origin coffees, it might be better to look at two things like processing. So whether it's a washed or a natural. Natural coffees are dried out in the sun for a lot longer and tend to be a lot more intense, boozy, very, very fruity flavors. And they don't really tend to go well with milk unless you like those fruity milk flavors. Look for a washed coffee which is a lot cleaner and cuts through milk a lot nicer and has a brighter acidity that just cuts through. And so maybe you look at something like a Brazilian, sometimes the Colombians, the South American coffees there, Central American coffees well. If you want something that's really fruity, citrusy, florally, you look at Ethiopia. They have great, great flavors in Ethiopia, but if you're drinking with milk, I wouldn't go and recommend drinking those coffees on milk. Stick to your more deeper, darker, chocolatey, multi flavors. And lastly, I would say, when you have your first sip of coffee, just take a moment to really try to find a word that describes what you're tasting other than just good or bad or sweet or bitter. Try to think, if I had to put a word on it, does it taste like caramel? Do I taste any fruitiness at all? Do I taste any citrusy flavors at all? Those will help you start to develop your palate. It could take you 10, 20 years before you really can identify easily flavors like blueberries or apricots. So don't be hard on yourself. Don't worry if you see on the internet, everyone out there is going, oh, I can taste the malic acidity and it's quite grippy and it's all tasting like a Granny Smith apple. It's not necessarily going to be you. And sometimes I think people just like to embellish what they really taste. Whereas I've been drinking 20 plus years, I still struggle on a new coffee to taste those really refined flavors. Very easy to taste the broader flavors, much more hard to get it down to those slithers of individual flavors. There's probably only a couple of hundred people in the entire world who can really define accurately those flavors. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope I've helped you learn a little bit more about understanding how to buy coffee online, what flavors to look for. And if you do like this video, please give us a like or subscribe or leave a comment in below of any experiences you've had. I'm Ride, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your breath.